Hi everybody. Welcome to Dandelion Cottage. I'm Leslie Watkins and today is day three in the creative verse to celebrate celebration. I hope you're well. I have a really fun project today. We're going to be making a little um, desktop easel card and uh, it's going to feature the touch of ink stamp set which is the one that has the hummingbird, the freesias, and the butterfly. Today I'm just going to be doing the butterfly and the flowers and instead of painting with watercolor because I know there might be some of you out there who are looking forward to watercolor Wednesday Today I'm going to show you how to paint with water-based inks, and this is going to be really fun, really colorful, and a really easy way to get a, a wonderful effect. So let's get started. So this is the stamp set. It's called A Touch of Ink, and this is one of the free sets that you can get with a $100 order. This has 17 stamps in it, so it's actually got two sheets, and the way this works is you have your outline stamps, let me zoom you in a little bit, there you go, so you have your outline stamps, and then you've got these wonderful filler stamps that look like watercolor. Okay, so it's a two-step process. First you do your, at, well, you can do it either way, but you first you do one and then the other. And that gives you a, a really, <clears throat> excuse me, quick and easy watercolor look. Plus, it has all of these really nice sentiments, and it even has some speckles, which um, we may or may not be using today. But this is reduced. This is not the actual size of the stamp. So for instance, just to give you a point of reference here, here's the, here's the butterfly and it's, it fits basically in the palm of my hand. So it's not tiny like it is here in the picture. Okay, and then what I have is a piece of the the um, Fluid 100 watercolor paper, and I've trimmed this down to three and three quarters by five. Let me zoom you out a little bit, okay? And I also have, I have this uh, little mini palette here, and it's got three colors of ink in it. It's got yellow, red, and blue. And it really doesn't matter what colors you pick. You just experiment. You see what mixtures you like best. And I have a water painter. So this is one of the brushes that has the water held in the handle, a little reservoir. I'm going to get out my stamp pad and let me check my settings. There we go. Okay. And I'm using, I have Sahara sand ink on my table here. This is a kind of a, a light neutral gray, but any light color will do. If I had a light green handy or a light yellow, I would probably reach for that right now, but it, but it really doesn't matter because this is going to wash away. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to begin, let me zoom you out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. There we go. So I'm going to begin by stamping off, and that means I'm just going to be 
stamping on my scrap paper once and then onto my watercolor paper because I just want a very light image. You see? So it's, it's hardly even there. It's just enough to guide me as I get my initial wash in. Then I'm going to grab the flowers and I don't know if these are freesias or not, but they look like freesias and I love freesias. So that's how I'm going to be painting them today. So again, I'm going to stamp off once, stamp the flowers. I'm going to do these a couple of times. There we go. Maybe one more over here. Okay, and now I'm going to use my leaf stamp. Okay, all right, so that's my stamping done. You can put the ink away. It's just that easy. Anybody can do this. Okay, so just a little scene with the butterfly. And I'm going to, I have a, a piece of plexiglass here. I'm just going to put this on my surface because I might want to do some spritzing. Okay. And um, and actually I will. I'm just going to grab my my spritzer. And I'm just going to give this a little bit of a spritz on the back and on the front. Hardly anything. And, oh, I need a paper towel. So I've got a, a paper towel here as well. So I'm just going to, let's see what this blue looks like. I'm going to get a little blue started. For my background. Oops, wrong color. Okay, we'll make it work. Just soften that a little bit. There we go. Maybe just a little bit over here. Get a little more color in this corner. It's looking a little faded. There we go. Okay. I'm going to put some over here. Okay. Now I'm going to put a little bit of a wash over the butterfly. I'm start with the yellow. Just going to squeeze a little bit of water in there. And 
and I'm going to paint the, the flowers yellow also. And this is just a, a light wash. The, the color is very diluted. off and I'll go back to them in a little while but let's just keep going I'm going to I'm going to take this same yellow and just put a little underpainting on these leaves Because how do we make green? We mix yellow and blue. And so there's my yellow started. Actually, I'll fill this whole area. There we go. That's better. I don't want all that white showing. Okay, now let's mix the green up. I'm going to take that yellow and I'm going to mix it with some blue till I get a nice warm green. And I can begin to paint that in. Now my paper's starting to dry, and that's, that's fine. That just means that I'm going to get some sharper edges. And I'm going to go back into my flowers and put some drawing strokes. go. So you see it's just it just takes a couple of minutes to get your painting started. And now I'm going to work on the butterfly. So I want the the butterfly. I think this this looks to me like a monarch butterfly. So I want to give it a little bit of a orangish tone to its wings.
Okay, and let's go. Now I'm going to I'm going to take that green mixture I made and I'm going to make it a little bit darker and start to indicate some of the the veins on the leaves. If you like, you can put a little bit of green on the stems. And I can go darker yet. Just put a little richness back in there so it's not so washed out looking. All right, so it's that easy. I can put some background. I'm going to put a little bit of um, background leaves in here too. Oops. Alright, so that's coming along. I'm going to get back to that butterfly. Just got a couple of these spots that I may have missed. Hi Kelly, hi Ginger. Ginger from sunny California. We still have plenty of snow here, although it did warm up quite a bit today. So, so some of that snow is collapsing now, which is making it a little bit easier to walk. But it's wet and heavy, so the shoveling isn't going to be so easy. All right, so there is the leaves pretty much done. I'm going to go back into my butterfly now and get some more detail. So I'm taking that red and I'm just mixing it with yellow to get a nice bright orange. And I'm going to just go back over some of those veins so we get that detail. There we go. So just um as you can see, I'm just sort of building it up slowly. I'm not in a rush to finish. And, <clears throat> and I'm working all over the picture 
at the same time. I'm not just getting stuck in one area. You want to make sure that when you when you place some strokes in one place, you want to check to see how it looks to the rest of the picture. And what I want to do now is I want to get some um, some darks. So for the butterfly's body, some of those some of those uh, lines. So I'm just mixing together a little bit of blue and red, and I'm getting a nice dark violet. And we're just going to test this, see how how dry the paper is. Well, that's holding pretty well. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put the body of the butterfly in. And I can put some touches around the wingtips. And I can even get its legs in, a couple of little strokes, its antenna, a little bit back here. There we go. All right, and I think maybe just a couple more dark greens on those leaves. As the, as the ink dries, it gets a little bit lighter. So you may want to go back and do a little bit of a retouching here and there. Okay, I think that's enough for now. And while that's finishing drying, I'm going to move this off to the side. I'm going to get out my um, card pieces. So I'll just put this up. Now I've already cut these out. So I have a piece of 11 by four and a quarter cardstock and I have that scored at two and three quarters and then at five and a half. I've got another piece of the old olive cardstock and this measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I have a piece of Mango Melody, which is measuring at four and five and a quarter. I've also gone ahead and I've punched out three pieces of Mango Melody. And for this, I use the Timeless Label Punch. Okay. And then I laminated them. So this is... This is three pieces of cardstock glued together. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Mango Melody and I'm going to glue that to my piece of Old Olive here. And it's nice to see these bright colors in the middle of winter. All right, and I'm going to take my, my bone folder 
Give that a good burnish. And now I'm going to, well, actually, before I do that, I want to do one more thing. I'm going to grab a piece of very vanilla. So this is, this is just a scrap and I'm going to cut this down. To, let's say four mm, I have to measure let's see what this is so this is two and three quarters so I want to, I'm going to cut this down to two and a quarter by three and a half. There we go. And that's because I want a little area inside my card here that I can write my message on. So I'm just going to pop that in there. Now let me see. This is this is pretty dry now. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down. There we go. Okay, now what I want to do is I just want to put glue on the bottom area of this card. And I'm going to lay this layer right over top of that. Okay, so I'm making sure that all these edges meet perfectly, that everything's nice and square. Is that a good burnish? All right, so this lays nice and flat, will fit in a standard envelope, but we're going to take our timeless label punch here, pieces that we layered up, and I've gone ahead and I've also used the double oval punch, and I've stamped this sentiment, which is also part of the stamp set, I'll show you that. Okay, so this is the thinking 
Thinking of You stamp. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that down to my, to my card stop here. So that just a little bit of that wonderful mango metal melody color is showing on the edges. Okay, so it looks something like that. And then using dimensionals, for this I'm going to be using the larger ones. I'm going to put four of them because I want this to be good and sturdy. Like that. Peel off those backings. And then I just want to place this at, at the angle that looks best. So that looks pretty good. Let me get that on there straight. And there is our beautiful little easel stand card. Okay, so this has a place inside that you can write your message. I just want to burnish this down a little bit more. I see a bump there. There we go. And there's your lovely butterfly painted with the inks, the water-based inks that we use to re-ink the stamping pads. And I'll get this so you can see it. So you can send this to somebody and they can pop it on their desk or their mantle and they can know that you were thinking of them. Now, I did do a little experiment. So this is a, a piece of the vellum card stock. And what I did was I stamped it on one side and then I painted it with the, um, the blends on the other side. And what I think I want to do is I just want to add a little bit of a 3D effect here. So I'm just going to bend the bottom corner of it a little bit. And then taking a glue dot, I'm going to put one glue dot right in that corner there. And I'm going to mount that and then fold it a little bit so that it comes out. All right, so I think you can see that gives a wonderful 3D effect. And it has that translucent quality so that the light can pass through and really give you that kind of a butterfly wing effect. I know it's hard for you to see this at this angle, but I think you can get the idea. Okay? All right. Well, thank you so much for watching today. Remember, you can get this stamp set for free during celebration, which only goes until the end of this month. And so uh, you've got four more days. Here is the host code for February. Okay, and, um, and I will also post that below with more information as soon as I'm done with the video. So please come back and you can get all the supplies that I used for this project today. And if you're interested in getting this stamp set for free, all you need to do is place a $50 order Oh, sorry, it's a $100 order for this stamp set. I forgot because it's extra large. Okay, there are 17 stamps in it. 
but for a hundred dollar order you can get that stamp set for free only until the 28th okay thank you for joining me stay well stay creative and i will see you tomorrow for day four of the creative burst to celebrate celebration <music>